Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Welcome to my YouTube channel. <coughs> so I've actually come into my craft room and I thought I'd create a project just because I feel like it with my new release. So the, my new release is available on Create and Craft on a one day special on Monday the 6th of November at 6 p.m. and Tuesday the 7th of November at 10 and 2. But what I thought I'd do is come by and do an off the cuff demo and I'm going to use my shadowed heart. I'm obsessed by the stamp, but there you go. So I'm going to use this stamp set. Let me just bring this in and you can just see the beautiful detail that you've got on there and I chose to keep my stamps black and white mainly because I love the black and white I know with the coloured packaging it offers you some inspiration but what I like to do is spend my time offering inspiration through videos YouTube Instagram and Facebook posts so that's how I like to offer the inspiration so what I'm going to do is take my acetate and what I can do is I can just look at whether I want it direct onto the packaging onto my card here or I can play around with the packaging and do I want it here so just have a look at your packaging that really does help so I'm going to place my um, stamp onto an A5 block because this stamp is the whole size of the A6 stamp it's a really good size stamp and what I'm going to use is I'm going to use Versafine Claire Morning Mist. I've still got lots of things on my desk that shouldn't be on my desk and I should have tied it away. Did I tidy away? No. So let's just take our ink pad, which is grey. This is the Morning Mist Versafine Claire morning mist and I'm starting with grey and you can see I'm using lots of tapping just to make sure that I add a good even layer of ink don't scrimp on that ink and don't be in too much of a rush I'm then going to use bluebell now I don't know how it's going to turn out because I haven't done any prep and I haven't done any work beforehand so I'm just going with the flow so the blue bell which is also a versifying clear ink now I could put a piece of copy of paper down just to save the non-stick craft sheet but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to use as is now is there a little bit of there might not be a little bit of blue just on that sentiment Let's just take this here so let's move it along a bit just so it's sort of on the side there we go and it's sometimes it's not until I actually start creating that then I st the, the idea starts developing especially if it's an off-the-cuff demo and you're not doing any any prep at all so I'm keeping these fingers here and I'm just evenly pressing just around the stamp. So just good, even pressure. I always make sure that my hands stay on the stamp to prevent any rocking. I've got the All and Create acrylic block so I can leave that acrylic block just to make sure I get that centre area there. And I just think that is a beautiful stamp i just think it is gorgeous absolutely gorgeous i just love that now i can extend this stamp a little bit so i can extend it by using stamp set one sorry 1066 meander through beauty and i can take that stamp set would you believe it I've not put it in the right place I'm terrible there we go so I can take that stamp set and it's got a lovely sort of text stamp on there that talks all about the garden and you're not meant to really read it it's meant to be 
sort of a background stamp just to give background detail and I'm going to use my bluebell so let's use that bluebell there we go and let's extend that stamping so that it looks still part of the stamp so I'm going to add my first generation of the bluebell and then I can add a little bit of second generation just down here just a little bit of that second generation stamping a little bit of third generation stamping here so what I'm doing is I'm sort of extending the design so let's take the first generation again take that first first generation and just add a little bit here the first generation of the second half just down here so I'm sort of adding to that composition and I can just ink half the stamp if I wish you don't have to ink the whole of the stamp and I do like how it sort of extends that stamp so you can see sometimes I'm using second third and fourth generation of that stamp so let's take that down just add this just let me lift that up just so that you can see the detail in the stamp it looks rather rather nice so I just want to see if then could I add a circle so I'm going to take a black pen. Let's take a black pen and just add a circle around the heart. And of course, I've used one one of my circles that it's not the best circle because it's all tatty let's see if that oh yes so let's just find it the other circle place that on here because that one that I was using has got a tatty edge so let's just there we go we've got that circle on there which you can't really see which is really good just so you can see it's sort of got the circle within the heart and I'm just going to add some shading around there let's add shading just add now the ink underneath is permanent so I don't have to worry about that too much it's permanent so that's quite nice so let's place that back so we've got it in the right place i'll just check my brush because i know what i'm like let's just grab a piece of kitchen roll and it's nice just to take my time and let an idea develop So I'll just take a little bit of water again. And I've got a piece of kitchen roll here. I can just take off the excess water and then I can just blend out the ink tense pencil. So I've used a grey ink tense pencil just to give me a little bit of that shading. And the ink tents are reactive to the water, but the actual ink pads that are permanent, they don't react at all to any of the moisture, which is quite nice. Now, I'm just going to add a little bit more of that ink tents pencil, just so that that blends out a little bit more There we go. Let's 
just place this here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, you see, I'm already moving packaging around and then you, I can't find anything. Where's the little? Do you ever do that? Keep putting things underneath each other. So I'm going to go back to this stamp set, this one here, which is 1066. Look, I've already got ink on it. So let's just wipe our... There we go. That's because I've put the stamp on one side, that's why. So I'm going to take this little stamp here and just make sure I add some of this sort of floral in here. So what I've done is I've stamped the same image on a piece of copier paper and cut that out. So we can just place that over the heart like we've got here. And then I'm just going to add some of the florals. So I'm going to stamp the floral in some black ink with my Nocturne ink. You wouldn't normally ink your stamp straight over your work because if you drop the stamp, you've then ruined your work. But I'm just trying to keep everything in view just so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm then going to add this floral here. So just adding the floral. I love this little stamp. It's just wonderful. So I'm just allowing that just to soak into there, even though it's only a little stamp, just giving the ink time just to absorb in there. So let's just move that out of the way. You can see I've just sort of got the florals in there. And what I'm going to do is take, if I put it back, yes, of course, I've put it back. Let's take my gel pen and I'm just going to add little touches of white just to the little bits of poppy and then I'm going to add some white dots sort of all around the heart shape where the blue is, just so that you, it goes just around the heart shape. There we go. There we go. What I'm going to do is just emphasize this circle a bit more just going around here so we'll just take my water brush which I haven't added any more water to but what I have done is dumped it down do you know I get engrossed in the process and don't take any notice where I'm placing things so I haven't initially added any water I always make sure to make sure I don't add too much water so I just check this water brush because it's a broken water brush it's not one that's got any water in but I do like the actual brush so hence I keep using it there we go just adding that circle around there and I'll place that down again Just so you can see, it's just got lots of, of detail in there, which works rather nicely. Just works beautifully. So then I'm going to take, am I going to take that one? Yes. 
So what I'm going to do, let's place some of this back because I know exactly what I'm going to do. You, you end up with stamps just everywhere. I don't really want that. So I'm just placing that back. Just makes it a little bit easier. I'm then going to take the dianthus and I can just take that out of the packaging. And what I can do is before I cut any floral out, because I'm going to add a pop of colour, I can just see, yeah, it's going to go there nicely. I always sort of test where I'm going with with an image. So let's grab a scrap of card. And I love this Dianthus stamp. It stamps just so beautifully. Ask me if I've got the colours out that I need. No, of course I haven't. Don't be daft. Let's just clean that up. And then I'm going to just stamp in my black Nocturne ink. I just love that stamp. I just think that is a beautiful image and that's the Dianthus. So let's just cut these out. Now, if you want to cut this bit out here, it's best to do that bit before you cut the whole thing out. So, you see, and now I'm going to have to show you that, aren't I? So what I would suggest is you don't cut it out. You can cut it out like I was doing initially, but if you wanted to cut out the white area, I just, as I go along doing off the cuff videos, I do like to be as informative as possible. I'm using a squashy mat underneath. I'm piercing the hole just with my fine scissors. And what I'm showing you is there's two ways that you can cut that out. So you can remove the white if you wish. You don't have to remove the white. There we go. So what I'm showing you is that you can remove that little bit in the center if you wish. You don't have to. It looks just as good. I've done some a sample where I haven't removed it. So, but I like to be as informative as possible just so you can see different ways of either cutting out coloring or whatever. So I'm just going to those now on the shows I've been informed that now they've swapped around my ephemera so my butterflies are going to be on the one day special and my clocks should be on let Leone loose sometimes the shows are subject to change so that's what happens just there we go so what i can do is then add my sort of dianthus here but i want a pop of color and i haven't got the colors out because i'm good like that so i want to add a pop of color and i've, I've just grabbed my clean color brush pens and i'm just going to they look like pink. Are they pink? What colour are you? And I can never see the colours straight away. Oh. Geranium red. Well, we want a red. That's perfect. What colour are you? 
Now, I don't want a dark pink. So have you got another red? What are you? Carmine red. Perfect. Two reds. I I'm terrible. I don't do colour swatches. Mainly because... I don't really want to store a load of colour swatches for the amount of pens and pencils I've got, but the professionals will recommend that you do a colour swatch because then you can look straight at your colour swatch of your pens and see what colours you've got. I'm terrible, and what I do is I pick out the pens that look right, I test it on the card I'm using, and if I like it, I use it. Yeah, that's perfect. So I'm using my clean colour brush pens and I'm using Carmine Red 029 and I'm using, hang on a minute, Carmine Red, Carmine Red 029 022. I've got two, oh no, I'm reading it wrong. <laughs> I'm dangerous. Carmine Red 022. Geranium red, 029. <laughs> There's no hope for me. Right, so in this case, my darkest colour is geranium red, 029. I'm so dangerous. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that geranium red. You can use your ink tense pencils because they are reactive with water as well. And then I'm going to use the carmine red and just blend out the lines of the darker colour. Now, doesn't that look professional? Not. It just looks like a blob. Right. And you know me by now. I like easy methods. So first of all, I need to clean that brush. What I've been doing is I've been doing the edges with the ink tense pencil, which is grey. And that grey will dull down my bright reds if I don't clean the brush. Now, I've got a tiny bit of moisture on there and I've always got a piece of kitchen roll. And I sort of use less water. I don't drown the colour with water. So I don't break down the card too much and soak it with loads of water. So what you can see is, there you go, not exactly professional. I've just watered out the colour and it's got a line in there which does absolutely nothing so what I do is I'm going to take my lightest colour which is that carmine red and then pick up that and I've got a little bit of water on my brush a tiny bit and I've always got kitchen roll and what I'm doing is I'm sort of layering the colour so I'm picking up that colour again and layering for me I'm a, a believer in that if you let your card rest a little bit, you can layer that colour beautifully and gradually. So then I'm going to go back to the dark colour, which was that geranium red. Pick up the darker colour and then I'm going to add the darker colour. And it's very subtle. I'm subtly layering the colour onto my card just so that I get a nice sort of blend. And then what I'll do, because the card is a little bit moist, it's not soaking, I will then come in and add that darker geranium red again. And I'm just dotting that on just to give me a little bit more depth. I will then come with the carmine red and then add a little bit more with the carmine red. And I've got the lighter colour here with hardly any water and that will just blend out nice and softly those lines. You can add a little bit of water, but if you add a little bit of water, take off the excess and you'll just get a sort of lighter colour of the second colour, a wash of the second colour, just to break that down. I, I like simple methods of colouring. You know, it's for me, I want it to look good, but I want a nice, simple method. I don't want something that's too complicated and my brain can't work. Now, for me, it's a good idea if you let that dry. If you try to add the white highlights when it's wet, it's very difficult. Now, you can tell that your card's wet because it's 
a 350 GSM card. You can bend it easily. It's got moisture in there. Now, if you let that dry, you can obviously apply the white gel pen a lot easier. Now, if I place this onto my card, that just gives a little bit of pop just to my project. It just pops a little bit to that project, which I just adore. What we can do is we can take the dark clean brush pen and I can just use my water brush and we'll just add. Now, if it won't sort of splatter from the pen, I'm just going to see if I can just flick some of that colour. It won't flick on there. So what I'm going to do is add the neat colour on here. So always test what you can do. And I've added no more water to this. And let's see if I can just flick this. So again, it's going to need a little tiny bit of water to allow me to add some splatters. So you can see I'm sort of taking it easy. I'm adding the splatters, but I'm taking it easy just to add a little bit of those splatters. I will lift it up because it's very subtle. I'll just add a little bit more water. And you can see that I don't want to really water that down too much. There we go. So I'm just adding gentle splatters just to the background. And I mean gentle. There we go. I'm going to lift this up just so you can see. Let me just, just clean that brush. Let's put the lid on here. Now, if you let this rest, you can go in and add another layer of colour and it'll give you some depth. And what we're going to do is when you have the recipient of the card. I've got a bit of white paint on my desk. The recipient of the card will see everything in a lot more detail than you can in the camera. But there's some very subtle sort of little splatters on there. And what I'm doing today is I'm just enjoying myself because there's no pressure, no deadlines where I've got to rush. So when I come onto my YouTube channel, I just like to take my time. So I'm just adding a little bit of the white here. And when I come onto my YouTube, sometimes I indulge myself and do things where, you know, I wouldn't normally. Sometimes you haven't got time if you're demoing live, you haven't got the time to do things in the same way as you can on your YouTube channel because I can take three hours if I want because you can just fast forward if you don't want to listen. So just so you can see, I've just added and you will see that goes slightly pink and it goes slightly pink because obviously it's picking up the colour from the background. So what I'm going to do So your gel pen will pick up that colour from the background because it reacts to any moisture. This doesn't react to any moisture. So when I put my Posca pen on there, it won't react with anything there because that's permanent. But what I'm going to do, just to add a little bit more brightness to the floral, I'm going to take an opaque paint. And this is fresco finish paint and that's way too much paint, but there you go. You can use the end of a fine brush with a little sort of a little you get these on the end of a fine on a paintbrush i'm using a pergamano tool i don't do pergamano i used to when i first opened the shop because when i was doing workshops i had to show how to do lots of different things not just uh, stamping but stamping was my first love but i've got these pergamano tools so i can pick the pergamano up that's got the paint on there and then I can add a little bit more of the dots in the white paint, just to give a little bit more brightness to the design, just to just lift it a little bit. There we go. And you can see I didn't need anywhere near 
that much paint. So let's just move that on one side. And you can always tell when I'm indulging myself, when I take my time in creating a project. So what I'm doing is I'm just adding some more of the dots just around my heart. Not my own personal heart, the heart I'm going around. So I'm just using my Pergamano tool. And you will see the samples I've made on the TV show. And I've also, those samples that they show, I've also created a workshop with those as well. I really enjoyed that workshop. So it's already pre-recorded. So I'm just adding some more of these dots because with the gel pen, they're not quite as defined as they are with the paint. So I'm just going around just with my paint. And again, way too much paint added to the non-stick craft sheet, so far too much. Let's just, there we go. Just gives a little bit of definition. So there we go. You just add a little bit of the definition and you can see the circles on there which also give me some texture i'm not going to place so i'm just adding this here and i'm just going to add this here i don't know why i've got this sort of black piece of card here i think it was because i was going to do another card but isn't it funny you, you pick things up and wonder if you can use them i don't know why i've got that piece of there but i'm going to add this here and then what i'm going to do okay and i know most of you are like oh, are you mad but i just love a bit of cutting out so let's take the dianthus let's place that back we will use the wording on there as well There we go. I've got so much ink already on that stamp. It's just unbelievable. Right, so I'm going to go back to this stamp here, which is stamp set 1066. And then I'm going to grab a scrap of card. And I'm just all relaxed. It's just about enjoying the process. It's not about rushing. And I don't want I don't want to rush. It's lovely when I haven't got deadlines and I can just do as I please at my own pace. Sometimes deadlines can be a little bit restrictive, but sometimes they can also be good for inspiration because you know you're at a deadline. And so you start creating and ideas develop the more you create. So sometimes it is worth it. Right. I'm just going to cut this out. Just so I've got a little bit less card. I can't be doing with loads of card. So what I'm going to do is grab my adhesives. Don't ask me why I don't put the adhesives on the card, on the desk beforehand don't ask so i'm going to use my pin flare and my nouveau deluxe so i want to secure the bottom of the floral like so and then i'll just put a bit of pin flare just on my card Just wipe my fingers and we'll just add that little floral just there 
I'm just making sure that it makes contact with the card. That's the thing, because sometimes if it doesn't make contact with the card, it just dries floating in the air and your adhesive's not touched the, touched the card. So I'm going to then take these. And what I'm going to do is just, which one do I want? Let's, I'm going to go around these just to give me some twiddly bits just to my card. So I'm going to go round just with leaving a white border just so that I've got some twiddly bits. You don't know how important twiddly bits are. Twiddly bits are just so important. So I'm leaving a little white border I'm just going to cut out sort of parts of this stamp. There we go. So let's just cut out little bits of it. There we go. So I've got sort of twiddly bits. You know, like you used to do if you did sort of little bits of floral arrangements. And I can spend ages doing this. It just makes me happy. And I just hope you don't mind and you indulge with me because Tracy loves to, to faff and fiddle and it's just my favourite bit. So we'll just, so that one's got a little bit of adhesive on and we'll leave the others sticking up. I'll add some white to that as well. So let's just cut out this one. Honestly, this stamp looks beautiful. Just, I'll show you with different colours. Because this is just my time to play. So I've got now another little twiddly one and I'm just going to stick the stem and not the floor, the, the head. So just the stem. Just so I can have that sort of sticking up. I just love that. I'm supposed to be putting the lid on there. And in this video, I'm just going to, I'm just playing. There's no, no set plan. We're just going to play and just look at a few things. Just because sometimes it's nice to, to just do that. And just spend a bit of time just, just playing. So I'm going to, let's make that a little bit longer like that. So I've now got another twiddly bit. I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive just to the stem. And don't worry if you don't want to add the twiddly bits and you're not a faffer like me, don't add them. I'm going to add that bit there just so you can see. I just love. Makes me happy the twiddly bits do. So let's this one out now. So I'm just cutting this stamp up. Let me just. And I'll probably break away from this in a minute because I just want to show you something with the little stamp as well. I like the fact sometimes as well, if I can just go off on a tangent showing you different things and that's what's ideal about your own YouTube channels you can do whatever you want okay some more twiddly bits and I like them all all bent so do I want that one yeah we do so let's add the adhesive Again, I'm only adding it 
to the stem bit and not sort of sticking the head down. Let's just add that here. Just press that down so we make sure that we've got that caught. There we go. I just like the little twiddly bits. They make me happy. It doesn't take much to make me happy, but twiddly bits do. Let's move those bits of cards just out of the way. So let me just show you that little stamp. So I've got this little stamp here. And so let's add a little bit of black to the stems. Like so. And then let's take lumberjack plaid. So we'll take lumberjack plaid. Let's just add the lumberjack plaid. You could also use your clean brush pens and add the red to there. Let's just make sure it's a little bit. There we go. And then add this here, like so. Now you've got the black on the stems, a little bit of red. Well, I did that well, didn't I? I did that well. So what I'm going to do is ink it all in the black. Or should I just not ink it in the black and do green and red? Should have done it with pens. So let's do it with pens. I've got another spare piece of card. Where's my... So let's do... Let's take another piece of card. It's a good job I cut extra pieces of card, isn't it? So let's take our pens. So I've got the clean colour brush pens. Where have I put them? Let's grab a green. Let's grab a green, any green. I'm not bothered which green it is. So I'm using my clean colour brush pens. Let's just use the clean colour brush pens. Let's just see I can I can get the stems with this, the fine stems. So let's add those clean colour brush pens. A little bit more down here. Like so. And then let's use that geranium red. So we'll use that geranium red. just on my florals um, where's your where's the stamp so if you take your stamp you can have a see where you've got your flower heads if you can't sort of make out your flower heads just There we go, and there's another. And I don't have to rush because these are reactive to water. And all I'm doing is I'm just having a little play, just so that I can see if we can get different, different effects. So I'm just going to spritz that lightly with water. So literally one spritz. One spritz with water. Let's just see how it looks with those. So I'm just going to allow that just to sit on there gently. I've added a little spritz of water. Now, we're not making a card. I was just experimenting with the stamp. So you can get sort of a more delicate feel 
with that. So then you can take your permanent ink. So then let's take the permanent ink. So what I'm trying to show you is if you wanted to do sort of meadow stamping and add a little bit of red, you can do that as well. So then you can sort of twist your pen, your pen, your ink pad, your acrylic block, so that you've got the red ones in the background. And it's good because you can over stamp with this so it doesn't it doesn't sort of look bad when you over stamp. Looks quite nice when you just over stamp with it so it works nicely. You can you can over stamp. So let's take a little bit more here you can Can sort of over stamp with the design so that's what I'm checking now you can also I'd just like to show you where's the let me get my Posca pen so with the Posca pen let's grab a Posca pen so if we grab a red Posca pen can we go over the top with a little bit of the red, go over the top with the Posca pen, with that red, just on some of them. And then with a black pen, you can extend this down yourself because it's just scribbly lines. So you can extend that down. So we've just added a little bit of the red with my Posca pen. I will lift this up, just a little bit of Posca pen. Let's extend these lines down here. What I'm showing you is you don't have to have lots of product. So I've used my Posca pen just to add little bits of red to them. You can also Obviously, this is not a finished piece. I'm just giving you ideas. You can also ink. Where's my glamorous? So we'll take this glamorous ink. So you can ink the whole stamp. I'm just trying to show you some different ideas. So you can take your glamorous ink, ink it all over. So that you've definitely got the stems and everything. And then just go in and add a touch of black. Let me show you. And then you can add, let me mad this over. So this isn't a finished piece, it's not a project. I'm just showing you just the way you can change the stamp up each time. So then you've got the black stem and the pinky florals as well. So it works really, really nicely. And what you can do is, so I'm making, you, you make something from nothing. Where's my sentiments? Oh, do you know, I've got everything all over the place. So then, even if you were just making a note to somebody, let's see what we've got. You could take your ephemera, hash 35, and you can just add blossom here, like so. So you're making something out of nothing. So let's take our pin flare. So you know this wasn't a card. This is just like a sample piece. But what I'm showing you is you can develop something from nothing. So take the blossom ephemera, add that to the bottom so you can make something out of nothing even something that initially starts off as a complete and utter mess so leave that there take the stamp again 
why do I move the stamp? Don't just don't move the stamp. There you go. Take the scrap card. So ink that with black. So I'm showing you what I'm showing you is from a total, you know, nothingness. You can make something. Sometimes don't think it's a complete disaster. I don't want to show you just perfection every single time. I want to show you how you can develop something that maybe isn't isn't quite as perfect as maybe you would like. So let's just take this and I'm going to cut a few of these twiddly bits out. I'm just going to cut a few of those out. Just turn you round. I'm just cutting a few of my twiddly bits out. Again, you don't have to cut out the twiddly bits if it just fills you with dread. Grab some little twigs or some li little bits of um, flower soft or little bits of sisal nest. Anything like that. You can make something out of nothing. Let's just move that out of the way. Just take my twiddly bits. And let's go down here. And just... There we go. So I've got couple of twiddly bits. See, I've even gone away from the first card. And then what we're going to do is take our, what's this called? Nouveau Deluxe. I think what I'm trying to show you is, don't be put off by what you see on social media. Don't be put off on what you perceive to be perfection. Nothing is perfect. Look, I've chopped a flower head off here. So I chopped a flower head off there. So don't waste it. So I chopped a little flower head off there. Big deal. Doesn't matter. Don't be hard on yourself. Take the little bit of a flower head. See it as an opportunity to tax your brain a little bit. Add a little bit of adhesive. Don't believe that what everybody does is perfect. Don't believe it because it isn't. So I've added that blossom there. So you can see I had nothing in the background. Nothing. So what I'm doing is just cutting out some twiddly bits. So let's cut out some more twiddly bits. And I've even stopped making my original card. So let's just cut out more twiddly bits. You can cut your twiddly bits out however you wish. Now before you get that sort of all excited like me and you start chopping away and it's probably better to add your touches of white to these little flowers before you actually adhere them to your card. But I didn't do that. So let's just cut this out. And we'll cut down there. Okay, so I've got some more sort of twiddly bits. Let's just straighten them up a little bit. And let's add some adhesive. So we'll add our adhesive. Let's just take the adhesive, come on Tracy, maybe the adhesive, come on. So I'm just adding it to the stem. I'm going to tuck it behind, you know, that what was the mess of a background. So we'll just cut out this one. What I'm trying to say is, just enjoy it. Enjoy your product. As long as it takes you away from 
what the mundane of whatever you know life can be a little you know difficult at times so just take yourself away and just create for the sake of creating there doesn't have to be a reason and you know and this is not being preachy we're not preaching what we're doing is what i'm trying to show you is that don't believe the perfect pictures the perfect scenarios on social media wait it doesn't matter whether you're a designer a creative just doing it for fun nobody is perfect we all make mistakes and it's important that we show that you know we it's also important that we show that not everything works but just sort of stick with it now this is looking rather nice so now let's take let's take tracy can't even see what did she do with that face of fine claire did i put it back yes i did didn't i so i'm going to take that glamorous now you saw me just botch bots of stamping on there so i'm going to take the glamorous and you can see i'm just spending time enjoying myself so i've added the glamorous add a little bit of black to the stems there we go let's now add this to our scrap of card there we go lovely so we can then add a few more twiddly bits so let's take this and just leave a white border because it's easier then just to cut that out and you can hand deliver the card to a friend when you go and have a coffee and just say you felt like making this just for you you can maybe give them a little garden plant to cheer them up there doesn't have to be a reason it doesn't have to be a birthday it can just be just because you felt like it so let's have a little bit of a deceiver here and you can spend more time hoping your adhesive works than anything else and then i'm going to add this just a little bit further down and all i'm doing is i'm cutting i'm not cutting i'm sticking the stem but not the flower head i'm leaving the flower head can you see i'm just leaving that just like so so a little bit more of the pink so let's just have a nice longer stem we'll cut this out there we go so just leaving a little bit of a white border just to make and what i like to do is i can't be doing with working with too much bulky card just makes it far easier to cut out and i know there are some people out there that don't like cutting out so if you don't like cutting out use some of your ephemera and just add some of ephemera to it let's just cut that out around i love fridays i always class fridays as sort of a relax sort of dabble day and i also class relaxing as doing craft and being creative that's my relaxing time as well and if i aren't doing that i'm gardening just very rarely sit and just do nothing i do sit and watch my movies i love a good movie i love waffling as well as you can tell from this video let's just add there we go let's just take a little bit more of that off 
this. So now where am I going to add that? Yep. So we'll just add a little bit of adhesive again to the stem. I've got a little bit of the pin flare underneath there so it will catch some of the stems there we go so something from nothing and then so what I'm also showing you is if you can only afford an A7 stamp set which I keep losing no idea oh there it is so I've also got the little text that's from this A7 stamp set 1066. What I'm going to do is take a little bit of the Versafine Clay Clay Versafine Claire Morning Mist. Take that little stamp. You can add it to the acrylic block if you want, if you wish. We don't want that bit of glue that's there. Preferably no glue please. So I'm just going to add a little bit of text just to my composition so I'm just adding little bits of text with the grey and I'm using it without the acrylic block because with the acrylic block I am inclined to press the whole of the stamp and I don't want to do that just want to add some little touches of text here and there, so it looks a little bit more botanical. A little bit more finished. And you can see I'm using several generations of stamping. So let's place that back. So place that back, let's place the other one. But we might go back to finishing our original project in a minute. Let's just take that let's just make sure our hands are clean move this all out the way and then I'm going to add some black splatters just a few delicate black splatters please 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 don't touch that card ask me how I know because black splatters when you're cleaning them up, smear everywhere. So just give that card time to dry and wipe up your surface area and make sure your hands are clean. So what I'm going to show you now, so a card from Utter Rubbish, you add it to a black mat like so. I'm not going to just stick this at the moment because the black splatters are wet. Add this, so my white card was four by six inches. So the white card was four by six inches that I used. I've added to a black mat four and a quarter by six and a quarter and then a white card blank five by seven. And that was created from nothing. A splodge, really. And what I'm trying to show you is you can make something from it. We're going to add some white splatters and white dots when that black has just dried. Let's go back to our original which is here. Now we'll add some white splatters. I'll add white splatters to the other one shortly. So we're going to add some white splatters that just catch on everything. Just add some white splatters. We will add white splatters to the other one as well shortly. And then I'll just move that out of the way. let me show you something else this is what happens when you play do you remember this piece of black card i showed you this one where i said i've just cut it it's just scrap look at there if you placed that sort of there let's not flatten everything down let's lift this up look what you've got so you can have a card like that this is a scrap of nothing take this card you could put it on the top like so let me show you place that on top you could then 
Let's take some ephemera. There you go. Add one of a kind and add that. Now that, see, I love that, but also, now, you don't panic. Don't panic. Look what I'm doing. So, I'm showing you. This is my playtime. I'm, I'm not stressing. That I've just pulled a card apart. I can't find my pin flare. So, let's take the pin flare. So, I've just pulled that off. Take this pin flare. Let's add that under there, like so. Push that along, like so. Press that down. So I've given you two ideas. Take the blossom that's still got the pin flare on there. Add that to there, like so. Add that just like that. Or I could have added one of a kind with my ephemera. Now I'm going to take my white splatters, bring the card. Now, nobody will know that you've made this from a hotch botch. Add some to the background mat as well. Nobody will know that you've made this from a hotch potch of a piece of card. We'll just let this dry and then I'll adhere this to the card for you. But let's just let that dry because I'm going off on several million tangents. But that's what this session's about. And plus, I don't want you to be put off just because you think you're always seeing perfection. So let's just add a little bit of that. Now we know, I'm sure, I, did I use red on this? Yes, I did. Always check your brushes just to make sure they're clean. And as you know by now, traces are never clean. So when you're using red, it's quite a, an intense colour. So make sure that you take off that excess. So let's just add some life as a journey and just spread that out. Okay. So let's take the Dianthus stamp set and the Nemesia. This is your Nemesia. Let's take this. Take the Dianthus little wording. Can you tell I can't speak? Let's use this piece of card. Stamp the Dianthus word onto white card, which just pops nicely. Let's have that. So this comes with your dianthus. So this dianthus here, this is your dianthus. These are your nemesia here. This is your dianthus. But to be honest, I'm a great believer it can be whatever you want it to be. Right. So let's just cut that like so. Just make it a little bit smaller, just so that that's not too bulky. And then I'm going to add the little dianthus sentiment under here. Let's add a little bit of a, a black foam mat to the dianthus wording. Nails come in handy when I'm doing this because I can just hold it in place. If not, just hold it with your scissors. And just turn that and I'm just doing it on card because I know how much black smears when it's on your non-stick craft sheet. And I don't want to end up with that all over my fingers. So we'll take a little bit of adhesive. Just I'm just going to adhere that on one side. It's just going to take forever for the adhesive to come out. Add the dianthus here, like 
like so. And then sometimes if you've got a little bit of adhesive, too much, just make sure that you just wipe that away because you want a professional finish just so that you can see that. Just love that. Let's make sure that's straight because, you know, a straight sentiment does help, doesn't it? For me personally. So then what I'm going to do, let me just grab, where's my, just going to take a little bit of my horticultural layers washi hash 12, no idea where the end is. I'm just going to take a little bit of this horticultural layers and I'm just going to just faff for England just add a little bit of that washi and this is the the first washi we had we now got a new supplier and it's more papery so let's just tear this a little bit more I'm just going to add a little bit of that just here so it looks more thought about there we go and shall we add a little bit of this there we go just add that there turn that over wonderful and we'll then add this to our black mat or you can create a layer of faux, you know, a matte and layer that is in this colour if you want. I'm going to add the black matte. Just if you want to add a, a little bit more of the white to your florals, you can. So let's add that to a black matte. our black mat like so so it's good sometimes just to take an hour out of your day just have some creative time even if you just create some backgrounds what does it matter it really doesn't matter so then I'm going to add that to a five by seven card blank so the actual pieces that I was working on are four by six inches Let's add that to a black mat, like so. Just add that here. That's it. Right. So, just shows you how all the stamps work together beautifully, really nicely. I'm then going to bring in my hotchpotch of a card, which is here. So this is my hotchpotch of a card made from seriously nothing. So I showed you two ideas with it of how to put it together. So let's just I have no idea even what that black card measures that black piece. Well, that's four by six, so it's probably about five inches in length. So yeah, about five inches in length. So I've added this four by six inch piece to a black mat that is four and a quarter by six and a quarter that I've splatted with some white splatters to coordinate with the splatters that are on my hodgepodge piece. There we go. We'll then add that to a white card blank, which is five by seven. And do you want me to tell you something now? I absolutely adore this hodgepodge of a card isn't it funny and that's why I'm saying to you don't give up on a piece that you think is a pile of poop so there you go add that there 
just make sure that's straight. Let's just lift that up. Now, let me lift this up for you and show how something out of nothing can look quite striking. And now I absolutely adore that. Absolutely adore it. Just wonderful. And if you want, you can use your ephemera butterflies if you want to add more. I'm happy with the way they are. But if you wanted to add your ephemera butterflies, so you've got one here that I've coloured for you. And just bend them so they've got some life. You can add, actually looks very lovely. Let me just, you can add that here. Or if you prefer a more subtle, that's more sort of, what do, mess around with them. What about that one? That's more purpley. What else have we got? Do you know, it's easier if you pull the things out. So if we've got one that's a little bit more, they're all different sizes and you'll just chuck them. Uh, I think it is going to be, you could layer one on top of the other, but that actually, let me just lift that up there, lift this down. That actually does look rather nice doesn't it like that I'm not going to add it because I like it like that but if you wanted to add a little butterfly also let's move this out of the way so that was made from absolutely nothing so what I'm trying to show you is how you can oh let's just pull them all out because I'll just put them in my little wallets anyway and I'll just knock the phone because I'm so engrossed So these are going to be on the one day special as well. Hash 29. And I've also got black and white ones as well, which I'll show you in a moment. So what I'm trying to say is don't ever give up on what you're doing. You can add sort of different pieces. There's a bluish butterfly there as well that you can add. You can also, if you want, with your ephemera, you can go in and you can add some of the white touches to your butterfly. Absolutely no problem at all. Just as if it was a stamp. It just gives you the possibility of adding those. I'm just going to leave those in a total mess like that. And then let's bring these in. I'm just trying to be as informative as possible. So then we've got the black and white ones, which you can colour to match your project, hash 28, which will also be in the one day special. Let's just bend a little. And now I am going to add that one. So let's just take the black and white one. Like so. Let's bring that down here a bit. Where's my scissors? Use my scissors. Just to add that. Just with a bit of movement. There we go. And now I've got a project that started from, let's face it, something that was diabolical. But it's no longer diabolical. I absolutely adore it i just love it and what you can do just so you look like you've planned this project just like we do we look perfect on social media we're not so what you can do then just add some little white touches and hey presto doesn't it look like this card was all planned when you know completely differently nothing was planned it was a hodgepodge it was a total mess. And you know that because you've seen it. And then let's just add that here. 
Now let's have a look at that card in its entirety. Now, when I photograph this, if you didn't know any different and I photographed it like this, you'd think, oh, that looks lovely. And you know I made that from a hodgepodge. And you can do exactly the same. So don't be put off by what you see on social media that you perceive is perfect. We all produce pants at times. But that doesn't mean that you can't recover it, just like I did. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I love that. So then we can bring in this project and take our little black and white butterflies. And you can see if you want to add a butterfly to your project. Just there, which I think I do. And actually, on this occasion, these butterflies are finishing the project off quite nicely. Just have a little faff around about where you want to add your, your project, where you want to add. So I'm going to add mine there. Faff around a little bit. And what's pleasing to my eye might not be pleasing to your eye. So just play around with that. Right, there we go. We've had a lovely hour and 20 minutes together. And that's what I think I'm best doing. I think I'm best showing you how I'm inspired by my stamps and how you can create something from nothing. And I think that's the best thing I can do is just show that. So I hope you've enjoyed those cards. And I hope you've enjoyed the process and my waffling. Love to all. I've just shaken the camera again like I am, true professional. So I hope you've enjoyed that and we will see you all soon. Love to all. Bye for now.